Hey, everybody. Welcome inside. It's my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker for tonight, the um, very storied and well-awarded, highly recognized, truly important inventor, discoverer, biotechnologist, Dr. J. Craig Venter. There are quite a few famous people that have graced us attending this autumnal Equinox grand opening. And throughout the United States and worldwide, we are really fortunate to live in a golden age of science and discovery when new things are being discovered like never before. But I want to share with everybody my earnest opinion based on, I think, some very important and basic facts that if you had to say what one person from the fields of science and medicine would be remembered a hundred years from now, what one name would be taught to school kids in junior high school and elementary school and, and, um, and certainly in high school, it would be the person who had first decoded the human genome because that is a scientific accomplishment like none other. Everybody thought that was impossible. The government thought that maybe it could be done if it was given enough time and enough billions of dollars. But Craig Venter did it on his own initiative with his own resources, and that's a gift that he has given to the human species for millennia to come. Now, a man who had accomplished something like that would be well within his rights to retire. He had already pulled off something as astonishing as a Louis Pasteur or a Jonas Salk. But in fact, that was just Dr. Venter's first act, because then he went on to accomplish something which will probably be even more significant for the human species, which is he created the first synthetic form of life, creating out of just basic raw materials a form of DNA that had never evolved in nature before and successfully operated within a cell. He is both the father of the human genome and the father of synthetic biology. That's astonishing. <laughs> Craig Venter is emblematic for what everybody says is impossible, going ahead and doing it proving it with rigorous science and technology. It is my very great and deep honor to have our Unisphere keynote speaker, the illustrious, the beneficent, the brilliant, the wonderful, J. Craig Venter. I want Martine to always introduce me. <laughs> Uh, Martine's been a dear friend for a long time, and uh, uh, the human genome was uh, sequenced 18 years ago, not far from here. Uh, Marilyn can claim that, and Rockville, and 23 years ago, the first genome was done at the Venter Institute. You know, it's, it, it's going to be what's done in this building that is really critical for humanity. But one of the things that's important, and I, I'm glad uh, we were able to do the same with the Venter Institute, uh, we built the, the first zero carbon research building in the world. It's on the UCSD campus in La Jolla. It's a little bit easier there because we get a little bit more sunlight, uh, uh, and uh, it works year round. I used to be able to say we had the only zero carbon research building in the world. Uh, I can't say that anymore. Uh, and this one's three times larger, which is a much bigger challenge. But it's important 
message today in this anti-science era that some of us are driving us to, uh, that climate change is real, and that people that are in leadership positions like Martine that not only are building a wonderful research center that's going to save perhaps tens to hundreds of thousands of lives, she's living every day what she believes by making this a zero carbon building. And if we get a few more like this uh, and this becomes a trend, uh, maybe we'll actually start to make change in the world if all corporate leaders take the same kind of responsibility uh, to the planet that Martine and her team has done. So, uh, uh, I, I'm really excited about what's going to go on in this building, developing new drugs for lung disease and cardiac failure. Um, the genome is an important part of the future of medicine. And uh, Martine and United Therapeutics can lay claim to being the only company in the world that is using genomics for every clinical trial. And the importance of that is we're all different. Uh, each of us respond to about a third of uh, the medicines that we're giving. So finding out who is a responder, who's going to have toxic effects, uh, that's going to come out of understanding everybody's genome. And doing that at the beginning with clinical trials is going to make for faster, cheaper, more meaningful clinical trials. And in the end, United Therapeutics will know which people should absolutely take the drugs and which ones absolutely should not. That's what personalized genomic medicine is about. Uh, and I think uh, the leadership shown in that era uh, is happening right here. The, the third area that they're working in, I, I got very excited about. Martine wanted to do something about organ transplantation. And she came to me to see if we could help their team do genetic engineering on the pig genome, based on our knowledge of the human genome, to get uh, pig organs, humanized pig organs, for transplantation. Uh, there's over a million people a year that die in the U.S. due to lack of organs for transplantation. Uh, and as we go to driverless cars, uh, there's going to be even less organs for transplantation. Uh, so we need a real solution. Uh, and humanizing the pig genome by altering the genetic code uh, is an idea that originated with Martine. Uh, we put together a fabulous team that's making tremendous progress and uh, hopefully in the f within a year or two the first transplants will take place that will save people's lives from just a simple idea of using the information from the human genome. So uh, with everything that's accomplished here, with something that's compatible with a future environment, uh, developing drugs the new way that everybody else will eventually copy. Uh, I'm proud to be here and I'm proud to call Martine a friend. Thank you very much, Craig. I'm so happy to see so many happy faces here. That that's makes me most happy when everybody's happy. <laughs> I'd like to start by asking my partner, Bina, to join me up on the stage. Bina 
Gina purchased the very first building on this Silver Spring campus for us back in the 1990s. She then remodeled it for our very first office with hammer in her hand and work boots on her feet. <laughs> I owe to my synergy with Bina all of the energy that I have to manage our offices and labs in 10 cities with nearly 1,000 employees. All of the creativity and vision that I have to conceptualize better and still practical solutions, we also owe to the coupling of our minds and souls. Thank you, Bina. In 2011, at our quinceanera, I gave a speech inspired by JFK's 1960s moon speech. He had said back then that before his decade was out, that the U.S. would land a man on the moon and return him safely to Earth. Fifty years later, in 2011, I said that before this 20-teens decade was out, we would transplant an end-stage lung disease patient with a manufactured lung and return them safely back to health. At the time, we were about as close to that goal as the U.S. was to the moon goal when Kennedy gave a speech, which was far, far away. John Glenn had barely orbited the Earth for the first time, and rockets often failed on launch. Now, seven years later, in 2018, I can hardly believe that not only did we accomplish our goal ahead of schedule, and not just once or twice, like the 1960s Apollo program, but that we have used our manufactured lungs to bring many dozens of end-stage lung disease patients safely back to health. Now, as remarkable as this is, and I swear to God, I pinch myself every day that we're doing this, if someone told me back in 2011 that not only would we accomplish our goal, and not only once but dozens of times, but that our manufactured lungs would work so well that a patient with a pair of them would actually win a gold medal in the shot put at the U.S. transplant games, I'd say, like, no way. I mean, that's, that's, that's insane. But in fact, that is actually what happened. And now it is my great honor to invite up to the stage Heather Leverington. May I hold your hand? Yeah. Thanks. Heather is a former college shot put champion who later found herself diagnosed with pulmonary hypertension, just like our daughter Genesis. Heather, it is my great honor to give you the first UT Champion Award for your heroism in battling lung disease, your courage in accepting our manufactured lungs, and your sportsmanship and victory at this year's U.S. Transplant Games. It's like, what a beautiful world it is. To me, Heather is like just the epitome of everything that's beautiful about being alive right now. We are gathered here on this autumnal equinox to inaugurate the world's largest zero carbon footprint building. At nearly a seventh of a million square feet, it is a shining example to the world that we can construct our cities 
out of buildings that do not add to global warming. Since we did this here in Silver Spring, Maryland, it can be done anywhere, and we have further proven that stopping global warming is practical and doable. Even our wonderful architects at Ewing Cole, and they, they are the best, Jared, Jason, the entire team, even they, as uh, Jared mentioned, were skeptical that this building could be done net zero. But we made it happen by using the subterranean earth as our heating and cooling battery. Beneath us are 50 wells, each dropping 500 feet underground, together with smart building technology and a megawatt of solar panels. But of course, it's not all these bits and pieces that really made it happen. What really made it happen was a religious respect for physics, a rigorous application of engineering, and an insistent value on being the change that we want to see. About a third of our newer employees are in their 20s and 30s. They don't want to live their lives or raise their families in a flooding world. They feel great pride working at a company, United Therapeutics, that is keeping the planet healthier while at the same time working our darndest to make our patients healthier. The Unisphere acts like a magnet in helping UT to keep retrain, retaining and attracting the best, brightest, and most caring biotechnology professionals. Ultimately, the lesson of the Unisphere is that the best way to be good at business is to do good at business. As Frank Lloyd Wright said, a building is not a place to be, a building is a way to be. And now I'd like to invite two Unitharians up to the stage for the ribbon cutting. Vice President Avi Halpert and Unisphere Project Leader Thomas Kaufman.